Hi, I'm Karma Kitai. I'm your host for A Livelihood, New Adventures as We Age. And today I'm going to introduce you to a very fascinating woman named Nancy Lelaware Sonnabend. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you. It's nice to be here with you. I know you have a long history of active board membership in in a lot of different in, things. In organizations that have to do with learning disabilities. And, and other things. Right now I'm um, an executive advisor for the Asperger Association. And the Asperger Asso- Asperger's Association of New England, which right. is just outside of Boston. So tell me what got you interested in special needs and learning disabilities? Well, I had four children in five years and three with learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. Um, One that's also on the high functioning autistic spectrum, Uh partially Asperger and other things. Uh And um, nobody at that time was very helpful in Boston. Mm -hmm. Um, It took a long time to find people that were clued in at all. So um, I went and really delved into how children learn that had all sorts of multiple problems, blind, deaf, retarded, cerebral palsy, Uh um, any kind of um, difficulty, and also how high-functioning children learned. Um, Because the regular school programs, private and public, were not working. And um, then I would come home and invent programs, especially for my son. Mm -hmm. And some of them I would um, then take into institutions and try with other children. Mm -hmm. And eventually some of those came to market. Mm -hmm. And I would then start it on the lectures circuit. Mm -hmm. Um, So I began being somewhat known in the field. And as a result of that, I sort of landed at MIT um, as a research associate Mm -hmm. doing research and eventually um, was grandfathered into Harvard Medical School, where I also did I Movement Research on Dyslexics. I think you told me that you don't really have specialized training in doing no, research, no, right? I, I mean, don't you're have, not a scientist. I have, have a BA from Sarah Lawrence, uh-huh. and actually, I spent my junior year abroad in Spain. So, if anything, I majored in Spanish. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and so, this um, is I'm probably the least field. likely person to mm-hmm. have written two books because I had four children, um, three with learning disabilities, and because I was so involved in their education. Um, and because I became quite known, um, parents, when they're not getting answers from the experts, they start networking with other parents. Mm-hmm. And I was getting a lot of phone calls. Mm-hmm. Um, and by 1982, I was really getting a lot of phone calls from mothers that were frantic that wanted to bring their children, Mm. child to me for a diagnostic evaluation. Well, I wasn't a diagnostician. Um, Mm -hmm. They wanted me to start a school. I didn't want to start a school. I had my hands full as it was. I had my own little clinic (laughs) (laughs) just with my children. At home, huh? Yes. and eventually they would say, well, then you, sh- you, know, you should write a book. So finally I sat mm-hmm. down huh. and I started writing mm-hmm. um, what turned out eventually to be Something's Not Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have the book cover up on the screen here. Um, I had no idea how to write a book. Mm-hmm. So it was a so very... How did you get the, sort of the courage or the motivation to do so? Well, I just sat down and I wrote 200 pages and I figured I'd written a book. And I finally found this woman at the Atlantic Monthly um, to read it. 
and she was really quite brutal. And she ended up reading all 22 rewrites, and she kept telling me... So there must have been something about that first write that well, got she, her in Well, she had raised a dyslexic child, uh -huh. but she, she told me and everybody told me that I would never you know, be able to write this, that I should get a ghostwriter. I tried. Uh -huh. I tried many people. Um, to try to get them to write the book for me, and they mm. were all terrible. All you did end up writing the book yourself. I, I guess, ended up writing the book myself. With some help from the editor, I suppose. So, um, so both of these books are available through the publishers. They're both available in bookstores, and they're both available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And they've both been very favorably reviewed on Amazon.com. Yeah. Right. So um, something's not right. <laughs> that book is—is is that uh, vignettes of your personal experience? Or it's it my personal experience of raising mostly my son, but also covers my other three children. Mm -hmm. Right, and raising them as a dyslexic person yes. yourself. Yes. Right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about your more recent book, though, *The Lelaware of Legacy*. And I know you said you read that biography of your, what, great-great-grandfather? Well, The Lullaware Legacy is really a biography and autobiography. It's, mm -hmm. it's an interesting combination. What do you think there is about your growing up years that makes you who you are today? Um, well, I grew up in such a fun family. I mean, mm -hmm. my father was so charismatic. and. Mm -hmm. He attracted such um, fun people. Mm -hmm. um, and you traveled a and great deal? Yes, right? we traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and his father had traveled. Um, right. They had gone south. Yeah. And there's and I, I think amazing stories yeah. about some of their travel. Yeah. I believe you told me, Nancy, that as a young child, your parents sometimes took you out of school. Oh, they took me out of school all the time. For traveling, but they made the, the trip into an educational experience. It was always it. educational, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the morning I had a tutor or I was put in a school. Mm -hmm. um, I always had my books with me, uh -huh. and so the morning was a study time for me. Yeah. And my parents were rid of me and had fun without me. Uh -huh. And then in the afternoon we went to the beach or we did something uh -huh. um, as a family. And in the evening we did something as a family. So either in the afternoon or the evening we did something educational. Mm -hmm. I mean. We either went to a factory and saw how something was manufactured, or mm. we went and saw mm. how sugar cane was refined, or we went um, and mm -hmm. saw um, when we were in Honolulu. Um, I took lessons with my mother on the hula, and um, we went to um, Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And I really understood for the first time, this was shortly after the war had ended, mm -hmm. and there were huge craters in um, the land. There was still barbed wire. Uh -huh. There were um, ships on all angles. And I vividly remember going into this enormous tower, and they were explaining how they sailors went into the tower and then they filled the tower with water, mm -hmm. and the sailor would put the rope up, and they would go to each knot and count so that they wouldn't get bends. It was a training for coming out of a submarine that was in distress. Right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank I you. I appreciate hearing about you and your books, and um, I'm interested in reading them all.